guys, Agent Fluffy here. I am going to do a fanfic read of Reharmonization Ponies by Alex Warlorn. Yay! Okay, so this one is called Reharmonization Verity, Diamond in a Rough. Verity is in the zone and is ready. Okay, then let's get started. But one more thing before I get started. It's going to be a very long chapter, so be ready for that. Let's begin the show! Alright, let's go! Hello, dears! It feels like it's been forever! Verity Bell at your service, most commonly known simply as the Verity Business Pony and Expert Dressmaker. Oh, and hold on to the element of harmony known as generosity. It's been over a couple of weeks since you all deal with that brute of a chaos spirit discord. Do no seem to be holding together all right. Scared of their neighbor that seem to be hanging out more than usual. Lush I strange and ask Miss Shirley for advice on how to handle difficult things. Maybe she wants to get baby thing one more shot. As for myself, I'm doing perfectly well. I'm doing perfectly well. I can now look at jewelry without vomiting. I'm fairly sure horses aren't supposed to be able to do that. I can now look at the rocks outside without falling into bits of self-loathing. I only break into a cold sweat now when touching diamonds rather than all gems. And the nightmares when a handsome prince arrives to woo me only to tell me his name is Tom and turn to, to a giant boulder now only happens every other night. Yes, I say I'm perfectly covered from the traveling no deal without the slightest permanent stain on in my inner beauty. Now, if only Pinkie Pie would stop mentioning how none of my dresses have those sparkly gems in them anymore. And Twilight would stop asking why I'm practically throwing away gemstones at Spike whenever he comes over. And I wish Fluttershy would stop telling me that he'd open up and talk more about what happened. What Discord told me that made me give up being generous and instead become the hoarder, as Twilight called me. Since we weren't acting like ourselves, Pinkie Pie insists on coming up with nicknames for ourselves, and we were under Discord's corruption. She says she can't decide if she should go with Rabbergreed for me, since it's more identifiable or creativity because it rolls off the tongue better. I tell Pinkie Pie, in no uncertain terms, that I do not care one way or the other, and that I have no interest in this particular project of hers, and that she should not discuss it with me further in any shape or form. What am I supposed to say? That Discord barely said a word to me as they re-offered me what I thought were some pretty treasures. Maybe I should take a page out of Lion Jack's book and say I resisted all his temptations like pure innocent Fluttershy and he had to force me to be selfish. I think we all had a share of lies from one time after this. And for the first time since I was chosen worthy by the element of generosity, I'm suddenly asking if I really am. I dealt with hecklers and idiots before who tried to paint me as some greedy nag and trade their own friends into some balls, and still refused to dignify their verbal assaults with an answer. But now I found myself wondering, was I being generous for the sake of others, or because I couldn't stand to look at anything that didn't fit my view of what we're spinning and had to force it to be that way? And I like Discord. I know the way the world should and should not be, so anything that conflicts that that has to change no matter what. But isn't that the way it is with every pony? P.T. thinks people should always be happy, and Char seemed to go out of her way for it. First I was everyone to be kind, but she doesn't go around bossing everyone to be kind because that wouldn't be kind. Blast it all! Blast it all! May Celestia take it all and banish it to the moon! Was I that desperate for that stallion in my life? Like, I was willing to love what I thought it was a giant diamond? I can swoon any stallion of my choice. So why don't I just find one worth my time and finally have my prince? Or did Blue Blood really ruin the nighttime gold of mine so utterly that I wanted to be with something I knew couldn't cheat on me or treat me wrong? Did I let that arrogant foe get to me that much? Even after I lost my temper and gave him the talking to me so richly deserved, and I really laid an upper class reject ruin why I wanted so badly to be with someone? I know Spike would mounted to me if I wanted, 
He's actually a little painful knowing, even when he wouldn't come to my side with how I was acting in this court ball. Thankfully, he didn't hear me call Twilight's little minion. And the Sweetie Belle didn't have to see me like that. She wasn't as insane as all the other ponies in Ponyville were at that point. I swear I wish Alessio would let me take a sledgehammer to this court statue! Sweetie Belle actually threw out her doll collection because they were giving her nightmares. I had to save them from the garbage and hide them somewhere. I know she'll thank me, eventually. Charlie and the parents of all the things in Colson Town are trying their hardest to help their children recover, but we're all dealing with what Discord did to us, even as Charlie tried to help her students. Celestia, bless her soul, I can tell she turned like the best of us during the time at Discord's mad plaything, but she still wants us soon to bloom as she insists the mean of a cutie mark. Sometimes I wonder if being a florist was what she was good at, but not what made her happy. Princess Celestia actually put out a royal mandate for counselors all over and all over Equestria to come visit Ponyville and all other places Discord had damaged. But there are so many of us who were tainted by Discord, and only so few ponies whose special talents is giving ponies the therapy they need now. So the doctors are focusing on those of us who really need help. Big Macintosh apparently can now stay in the same room with a dog without breaking down the nervous wreck. I'll admit, I don't know Applejack's brother all that well, but seeing that mountain of strength and silent was so damaged like that carries a whole new flavor of wrongness. But after the first two weeks, we were not able to at least pretend that nothing had happened, and we were able to play out through our lives. Well, and most of us. My oh-so-loving, attentive, and caring parent practically led Ponyville with photo finish on the first Pegasus I fly to the Southern Islands as part of their therapy for whatever torture Discord put them through. I didn't ask what Discord made them do, but they were covered in hoot marks and the indication of the garish, tacky brand names they always wore. And that, of course, leads to his sweetie belt again. I swear she's less than herself. I spend more time raising my little sister than my parents do. Back after a week's vacation? Ugh! I can't believe I still fall for that lie. This isn't the first time Sweetie has played my home for more than a month. I'm more of a mother than a mother is. Gah! This is a stress I do not need. Yes, she has to took her trying to change her name to Sweet Apple and join the Applejacks family to get me to realize I actually care for her. No, no, no. Spike keeps visiting, asking if there's anything he can do for me. I give him some meaningless task or another until he starts my for a day and leaves. I can bear the idea of using him for real workloads. Most ponies aren't interested in buying new dresses right now anyway. Why am I going to bring out of town? Maybe I should just tell him he's too young for me, and by the time he hits manhood, I'll be rocking in the chair. But he's about the only one in Ponyville who didn't suffer emotionally during the whole ordeal, and I don't want to be hurt like that right now. It would be the single most unlazy thing I could possibly do. I've already thrown away the orders for dozens of the ugly dresses I made for my friends at one time from the population of Ponyville. Suddenly they couldn't get enough of once. They were all bad as hatters. It was an unspoken agreement that I wouldn't force them to honor orders they made. Well, completely out of their gourds. Thanks to Lestia and her day in Luna and her night that Applejack and all the others volunteered to take Tom, uh, 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 the boulder, away and promise to drop him. Ugh, being in the middle of Froggy Bottom Bog where the frogs and Hydra could happen. Applejack said it was her way of making up of how the railway would accept my commission to take the boat to Appaloosa, smash it into a million pieces, and scatter the rubble across several miles of open desert. Twilight at first calmly suggested that I should keep it a reindeer of hardships and dirt, and made myself a better pony of it. I calmly suggested in return that Twilight should go to Pony H.E. Double Hockey Sticks. Thankfully, she became me later, and she admitted it was partially her fault. With it gone, I could finally walk around the shop without thinking every big round shadow I saw was it following me somehow. And it's those nightmares that stopped. The door to my workroom smashed it open with splinters. Tom rolls in carrying a bouquet of flowers in its cracks. No, no, go away! 
I trot backwards and rolls closer. Always rumbles. I love you more than anything, gravity, my love. And we shall be together forever. A coming tree is closed out to the bouquet and glares at me. My insides turned colder than ice. What can we know? I see, hear, think, cannot move, can't move, can't speak, can feel everything on the outside, but so empty on the inside. I see the great statue of the unicorn among my mirrors. Now, my rock princess, let us be off our tannins. Dozens of small rocks rolled in behind Tom and pushed me along. Taking one of my wedding dresses and throwing it onto me. I can't move. I can't speak. I'm not in that dress at all. No, my rock princess, let us be happily ever after. Forever. I started with send my full hoofs. I had fallen asleep in the middle of the day. How vulgar. Thank goodness no one has borne wind to such travesty. Maybe I was overtired, maybe? I stood in my stockroom, looking at my dresses, all the jewels I had found in the dark of myself. Even my earliest designs had always included stones of some sort or another. And they all reflected back at me as I stood there looking at them. Seeing the mere age before her time, tired, weary, invisible rays dragging behind her, and I imagined one big moment discourse nearing face on them. I screamed using my horn to tear off the gems I had so carefully and painstakingly placed myself, destroying hours, days, weeks worth, and men worth in minutes. Snarling and cursing and sobbing, stomping on them, and screaming at them. How dare they betray me! How dare they lead me astray! Jews that helps me find my killing mark and help me realize my special talent and create things of beauty. How dare beauty betray me? How dare they turn me into something I wasn't! I tossed them out windows, breaking glass, I knocked over mannequins, ripping off jewelry, and threw them in against walls. I didn't show mercy to any precious jewel or treasure. I showed no pity to any pretty shiny rock. The dresses were often torn to shreds. I kept screaming, I kept snarling. I stabbed my hooves like a mad pony. Rarity! I hear a small voice on the sleigh now. I turned and hissed. Sweetie cried out in fear, looking at the ugly thing wearing her sister's face. Rarity, the dresses, the what are you? I'm fixing them! But you said those didn't rip another. I said, I'm fixing them, you stupid filly! Don't you dare talk back to your elders! A sharp circlet whirled by. Wheels by Sweetie Belle's head and invested itself in the walls behind her. A few snuffled legs of remain floated to the floor. Sweetie Belle fell to her knees and covered her head to make sure I was small as possible and sniffed. Reality came down on top of me like Luna's moon, only for a moment. What had I done? What had I done? I let a Sweetie Belle sigh an instant, utterly wondering at her spontaneously learned how to teleport. Sweetie Belle shrank at my little my touch. I shuddered. Examined her. Thankfully, the circlet had missed her, but it had been eye level. And I knew I hadn't been exactly aiming. It could just as easily have been a few more inches to my right. I'm sorry, Sweetie Belle. I'm just so sorry. Big Sister is. Big Sister just did a very bad thing just now, and she's sorry. You haven't done a single thing wrong. Big Sister's just tired right now. I promise Big Sister's not angry at you. Big Sister's not going to hurt you. Big Sister won't shout at you again. Big Sister isn't going to do anything bad to you. Big Sister's just upset. Big Sister's ashamed that she could ever consider a jewel to be the most beautiful thing in the world. That she could ever consider them to be the most wonderful thing in the world to her. Big Sister's not angry at you. Sweetie Belle finally stopped shaking, and her eyes red with tears. Look at this wee dim thing, she asked. What? Well, what is the most wonderful thing? I knelt at her. <laughs> you are, Sweetie. You are the most wonderful and beautiful thing in the world to me. Because you're not a thing. You're my baby sister. There's only one of you. 
that makes me more precious than a thousand diamonds, and it makes me more special than a million jewels. Jewels can't tell me how much they love me, and they can't listen when I tell them how much I love them. You're the most important thing in the world to me. We just sat together for over an hour, watching the sunset through a broken window before I put a cloth over it to keep the night air from getting in. No offense to Princess Luna. Come on now, let's get this place cleaned up and go to bed. I promise you can help. I can? Sweet Bill asked, cautious but eager. Helping me has always been a desire of hers, no matter the task. It's small or big. You can't buy that kind of devotion. Yes, dear. You are, after all, the most beautiful and most wonderful treasure. A few days later, and after a very large knip and trip at the spa, it's just me and Sweet Bill. I was at the shop again. That's normal. My tiny bit that felt like the precious status quo, the old left wall was what it was again. There's a jingle at the door. A little violet's pink pony came through the front door with a white and purple mane. The fairy moved with the uppity air of an upper class heiress, but it mostly reminds me of a bit of a doll. Forced, almost mechanical, like she was putting conscious effort into her body language. Her name flashed in my mind as I saw what she was wearing in her cutie mark, and my coat became matted with sweat. Greetings, Miss Rarity! Like her body language, her voice was prim and proper, with healthy spiggly to spoiled elegance. But it also seemed forced. I was considered part of Ponyville's upper crust. Even them, like the tiaras, consumed me an outsider for being a unicorn. As it was, the Phillies went through her social expectations with minimal snottiness. Welcome to the Council Boutique, young miss! What can I help you with today? I said, putting on my best business face. The Philly moved closer. I took a step back. Diem of the Philly either didn't notice or pretend not to. The Philly spoke with a sense of entitlement. Your little store has the honor of accepting a very important commission from me, Miss Rarity. I expect it to be completed before the week is out. I assume this won't be a problem for the store with so little business as yours. I kept my face on. It was a struggle. Stupid little Philly. I likely do more work in a week than a member of your family does in a year. So, what is this dress of yours you would like me to complete? I finally realized how peculiar it was that spoiled blouse like dear Miss Billy would be without any escort. And where was that other half of hers anyway? Demon Og! The Billy pulled out a cruelly drawn figure from the saddlebag I hadn't noticed before. Myself missing a detail? How was that possible? Then again, I was trying my hardest not to think about how she was wearing her namesake on her head. With measurements apparently written in by someone else. From the measurements, the dress appeared to be designed for a girl to wear. The design was excessive and half, done with a little sense of style, and was far more flair than substance. Liz, I trust you'll be able to follow them with no real problems. Ignore what the notes say. Include at least five times as many diamonds as that, and make sure they're the largest you have. I know you're so called experts at finding diamonds, so no excuses! Remember, five times as many as. She practically shot the design in my face, and then I saw them. Diamonds! All over the gaudy dress with a giant one by the side, as if, for example, Diamond Tiara continued to ramble on for several seconds, but I wasn't missing anymore. All this saw was myself ripping the stone wall to pieces and ruining my appearance, all for the sake of something pretty and being vicious to my friends for no good reason. Thinking they wanted it for themselves, and finding it out was all a lie. I threw it out at once and felt the crushing shame inside me, but I've seen absolutely no different from the spoiled brat was several times worse. I was deluded in the thinking something worthless and precious. How much? By how much is a resume? My head had its communities. It, no, and my actions ran in my head. I have been so, so wretched. Are you even listening, you narwhal? Diamond Tiara, shout out. Her diamond Tiara actually looked rather tight, tilted slightly from an agitated expression. No, and yet, oh, what? Diamond Tiara said in total disbelief. 
Where is the last time I told him? Oh, and the parents have told him no? I said no! You can take your business elsewhere! Now get out! Don't you dare come near my store again! I smiled. You, you, you can't! No! Here's something you can't do! I just made horns matching for this suddenly confused and angry and very scared diamond tiara. I drank it in. So, who's a narwhal now? Diamond tiara was shaking. I leaned in close and held her spilly. Now listen here, you greedy little fool. If I ever catch you or hear that you call my little sister, I am telling your teacher, I promise, so listen to me. If I find you near my home again, I'll see you in a dungeon for trespassing. And I promise that little revenge fantasy already an empty head won't work. My customers will never listen to anything you or your parents say. My parents! Diamond Tiara actually began to snarl, and then I telekinetically tossed out. A Diamond Tiara fell, then fell off her head, and had to be thrown at her as a spoiled filly wrapped in tears, picking it up in her teeth and running. As adrenaline spent, I leaned against the wall. What I had done played over and over in my mind until Sweetie Belle came over from my later CMC group activity. No need for bandages this time, so I guess Skidoo hadn't picked out activity today. Big sister? It's... are you okay? Sweetie Belle asked, looking at me with concern. I must have looked worse than I normally did these last few weeks. It's... it's nothing, dear. Just... just done it. A class you made your showed up for a dressing me made. I had to turn it down. Diamond Tiara? Sweetie Belle asked. Then tried to become as small as I glanced, glared at her for saying that word. Yes, dearie, and you must know it was. Don't worry, she didn't cause any trouble. Was she acting weird like at school? I froze, asked carefully. What do you mean, acting weird? Well... Sweetie Belle looked uncomfortable under my gaze. She doesn't really bully us anymore. I blinked, only feeling very ugly. Really? Well, she doesn't even look at us anymore. Or anyone. When school started again, Miss Shirley kept asking her to pay attention in class. I guess she did that before, but before she acted bored. Now it's like she... Uh, I guess like she's somewhere else. So would you say she's being nicer? N not really... Yes? No. Me? She just ignores us instead of taunting us. But she keeps screaming that silver spoon! My jaw dropped. What? But isn't that her best? I corrected myself. <clears throat> Pony, real friend? Yeah, Applebaum thought it was weird too. No, I think what she said was, What the heck is they a bailed or something? You know that break we got after the panic over the cute pox? Ever since school started, every time Silver Spoon tried to talk to her, Tiara uh, just yells at her. Calls her good for nothing, four eyes. So the kid mark is stupid. Such so it means she's only good for being rich and isn't good at anything. And she's worthless. Shirley gave Tiara a timeout and Silver Spoon, I think she was crying, went to visit the counselor after that. Later when Miss Chili was talking to Tiara, she always shouted that she wished she hadn't been Discord and that everyone in Ponyville was still crazy. I think she might have got suspended for a week after that. I just listen. I can only listen. And there is clearly a larger picture going on here. That's when I noticed a piece of paper still on the floor, which I floated up to get a better look. It was the Diana's sketch, with her name on it. I finally noticed a small note in the corner. Sweetie Belle did as well. Mama's? Sweetie Belle read it out loud. I didn't know she had a mom. Eh? I thought I already had that talk with Sweetie Belle about where foes come from. Well, when Shirley wants to talk to her parents, it's only her dad who ever shows up. She always talks about what great her dad is, but never talks about her mom, so we figured she didn't have one. Everyone has a mother, Sweetie Belle. Everyone. Oh, I sighed. Everyone is a mother's child. I took the paper with me. Sweetie Belle and I spent the rest of the evening in village silence. I asked about her day, and she asked bits about mine. Shirley was apparently falling back on her old tactic of trying to relate to her students, but sharing her own ordeal during Discord's games. A 
Candy Show leaves been planting flowers in her big pony's head. I hear this called the Gemini Man. She talked about how bottled up feelings can turn a pony worse than what caused those feelings in the first place. It was really weird. What, dear? After he asked about it, seeing it Silver Spoon cry, I didn't think she knew how to. Of course, I thought. The logic of a child, in must dose, Silver Spoon was a bad, a bully, and therefore she had to be all bad. There couldn't be a single thing that made her feel pony. I suppose the creature that they do only need to make the lives of Sweetie Belle and her friends miserable. Well, you did say your only friend has told some very awful things to her. Would you cry if she knew awful things and awful things to you? But they never say awful things to me! Like how you all started fighting in the Royal Garden? I just said to that thing. Oh, uh, I... That was a bad dragon snake that made us do all, all that. It had to be, right? The idea that Sweetie Belle that she and her friends could have a genuine fight is that it just one hour and obviously scared her. After all, my friend's not supposed to fight, but it's not the point of being a friend. Besides, uh, I had more experience dealing with things and thought I could help her, but that didn't make some things less difficult. If you show it was, dear, and I'm sure too. Now eat your own fuck her. I kept Yara sketching me. She didn't come back for it. I wonder what deadly wrath she was convincing her father to bring down upon me, like she was a princess, and I was a faceless commoner. She couldn't appreciate that I personally knew her majesty's personal envoy to Ponyville, and has met Princess Celestia multiple times. I doubt her father would risk trying to cross a national hero, even to appease his daughter's demand. At the same time, I watched my flames for a few days. On a hunch, I made a few visits to the town records. I milked the gossip sources, filtered up the garbage and facts, taking advantage of Celestia's decree. I even paid a few visits to some psychologists in town. I found they wouldn't answer the questions I had, as a matter of course. But all the same, in a few days, I more or less learned what I needed to know. I closed the shop early and began to work. I told Sweetie Belle she could consider doing something nice to Silver Spoon. She looked at me like I had told her to give flowers tonight to my room. Knowing how much I sounded like foolish, I said, Sweetie Belle, being generous to people you like is easy. Being generous to strangers is simple. Being generous to people you don't like is neither easy nor simple. But it's also something that they can't imagine you doing for them. And the best gifts are sometimes a surprise kind. But would you want someone who was awful to get a gift? I thought about how to explain this the best I could. Sweetie Belle, I won't pretend that I thought that in, there was any good in Discord. I didn't think there was any good in Nightmare Moon either. I don't think Princess Renuna was bad. And there could be good in someone like Nightmare Moon, but everyone else. Sweetie Belle looked at me with an admirable soul to understand what I said before saying. But what does that have to do with giving a gift to a bad guy? Why give a bad guy something where you could give a little good person instead? Sweetie Belle. <laughs> Night to moon, not everyone was bad, but not thanking her for working on the night as far as the last year that was a day. But we proved her wrong. We helped her out of the dark place she was inside herself. I taught you very much about what other things does matter. I know it goes against a lot of what your teacher said, but if something is all, so much awful to you, it's because they think they have a right to be awful towards you. Because you've just something that looks like a pony, but isn't one. Or because you think you deserve to be awful towards. I'm sorry, sweet Belle. I really don't expect you to get any of this, but please, for your big sister, being generous to someone who doesn't like you and you don't like can cause good things to happen. Sweet Belle just not done me and wandered off. I want to say it's learning your skill in a sober conviction. Hopefully my place of authority as a big sister would help her make the right decision. Meanwhile, we'll work with some rise at sunset and slept until halfway through the following day. I also swallowed my pride and asked for Shai's help on the sewing. How did the mayor of special talent and will care no more about sewing than me? I usually did a lot of digging in the next few days. The, di the, the diamond dogs knew to take them, but I insisted on their help as well. She left it we agreed to. It was like swallowing bitter tea mixed with carpets, and every time I was given one of those things, I ordered them to find for me. But I endured. I let the sweat drip off me. I felt my body shake until it was sore, feeling them actually have kind 
chat with my body when I handle them. Somehow, I enjoy it. They were very surprised at the end when they emptied out my saddlebags, giving them an equal amount of gemstones to my own collection that I had to dog up for me. Sorry about that, I had water. <clears throat> Slowly, this is why we know it's a fair trade. To be fair, I at first intended to just simply take what I wanted, counting on the infamous reputation of what I wanted. But then I realized I was another queen, and I knew right to tackle the man of my fantasy. My talk with Sweet Bellas caused me to realize I reduced these dumb mutts to one dimensional trade. They had kidnapped me, and as much as I know them in their total lack of respect for their own appearance, I begrudgingly had to admit that they had their own simple appreciation for beauty. I was an artist and a business pony, not a tyrant. When I got home, I made my songs, weight, and everything else. The constant exposure was unpleasant, but I began to build up the tolerance I needed to walk again. Maybe I was just being selfish again, after all. Maybe I was just using this excuse to give myself what I needed to begin working again without being scared to death of my own materials. But I also knew this had to be done. I could have just ignored it, just let it go. But I realized I wasn't going to. Through about confession, she tried to talk to Silverspin, only to find that Philly yelled at her, asking if Sweetie Belle and the others were going to laugh at her now that Diamond Tiara hated her too. Silverspin is a pen acted like a cornered animal. Charlie had broken things up, and they went to see MC's very confused. I knew they were simply too young to understand that their bully's great fear was being bullied. So I was spinning the diamond to Yara, and now sat on the opposite edge of the classroom, apparently. So Miss Moon has only been a follower, not a leader, and now she found herself alone. Of course she thinks the Phillies have held the taunt, wanting to be friends with her, but really trying to set her up. And let them be cruel right back at her now that her protection was gone. I told Sweetie Belle not to give up, but Super Spoon didn't know how to make real friends. She thought it was crazy. Maybe I am at this point. Maybe everyone in Ponyville is now. Who goes through what we did? Come out undamaged. Two days later, in early morning, Bernie made my very real deadline. I told her to run the Tiara household. I knocked on the door, and a great earth pony opened it. I informed her I had a pleasure to live with a young lady at the household. Diamond Tiara dropped down wondering what could be so fun. I take it away her precious time. And it's on me in her face. Conforted and rage. You! Declared the old servant. Go her out! The old lady looked me ready to try her best. And said I said quickly, I brought you to commission, little Miss Tiara. Huh? She blinked those big eyes of hers. The girl's the entire room practically shook over itself, switching gears. Free of charge. Free delivery to you personally. Condition? She asked, not sounding very personal at all. I knew it, I did not it already. Has to be said, had to be said. I telekinetically opened the case and carried it, knowing the newly made glass, a diamond with the palm of the needle side of it. You sold the diamonds yourself. You dare! You want to show your mother? You still love her? You want to show her you haven't given up on her? You still believe in her? That you still your mother, even though your father is to say otherwise, young lady. And you're still waiting for her to get better. The better gets still Philly, but the most expensive ones. They're the ones that put the most time into yourself. The ones you put your own effort into. They're the ones that show you really care about the person you're giving the gift to. Diamond T.R. is John, I'm limping for her face. I gave the most formal, polite, and proper farewell fit for my society and next. Behind me, I heard heavy hoops falls and quick shuffling noise. When I come back, when I imagine a stallion passing through a middle danger, Diamond Tiara hiding in the cave behind the stallion. I managed to smile. Maybe I was being foolish. I knew this was important. Or at least, I didn't believe it was. And I think I finally understand. Mainly it's beautiful, and making beautiful things is simply what I'm good at. A pony is not a slave to the kitty mark no matter what they teach you in school. It's your guide, not your master. My element and my cutie mark are not the same thing. I've never been the same thing. I was a fool for believing they were. In making beautiful things and making things beautiful what I'm good at, my element is to be generous toward all that is. Of course I shall be. share my talents with them. But that isn't the only thing I can share. 
letting my sister help, spending time with others. Those are generosities too, not just giving away things. And I should have remembered that when Twilight's spell made me relive these moments, I had been true to that inner spirit, but I was too scared for what I had done. I never know how much of what I did was this court taint or my own choices. I'm not ashamed anymore. Not as long as I remember them no more. I don't know what witches cross my path. My greatest treasure is at home, and she's waiting for me. And whether I find someone to live my life is up to me. For the first time in weeks, I finally feel free. Diamond Tiara carried a bag in the mouth. Tiny red marks around her front hooves and face. So even without fingers or a magic horn, it's even harder than it sounds. A large white burly Pegasus pony walked next to her, as did one of her family servants, because there was simply no way a pony, H.E. Double Hockey Sticks, had this place would ever let a filly with its walls around protection and an adult. The servant, however, had promised not to tell Oryx T.R. that his daughter had really been this afternoon. Diamond T.R. looks near the old rooms only once, and wish she hadn't. Seeing the pink pegasus with stumps and wings and mindlessly seeing to herself, Screwball, you got a visitor! said the bully pegasus, sliding the small door and with the door open. Diamond Dion felt the weight of disgust at the oversight's better duster, calling the bear and tie by a name. Her name is Golden Tiara, she said mildly. Oh, 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 is that so, so? turned the old pony on the other side. She had a pink purple coat and a purple mane with white stripes. Look at the BB on the special days, she said in an awfully happy voice. Diamond Tiara pushed it out and opened the lower door. Happy birthday, Mama! Oh, baby, is that you? Does dear know you're here? Of course he does, she lied. He's only very much to get better. The pony in the room opened the bag and exclaimed the dress. He examined the dress every which way, turning it on, and every way except the way it was meant to be worn. Oh, is this for Mimi? Oh, 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 it's so pretty! Did she do this? It's so wonderful. Come to Mommy! Diamond Dia didn't even hesitate. She pressed herself against the door. Here in her mother's heartbeat, she heard hers. You know, dear, the world was finally right again a few weeks ago. Everything stopped being confusing and everything made sense again. The doctors even started making sense and letting me and everyone out. Then that rainbow came and the world was confusing again. But don't worry, I'm sure the world won't be confusing again really soon. If it all can make sense again once, I'm sure it'll make sense again real soon, dear. The mommy will be back home. My best day in time for your birthday. I'd like Mama to be there, yes, dear? Yes, Mama. That would be very nice. Diamond Tiara realized she has to end this conversation now. I'm sorry, Mama. I, I have to go now. Daddy's waiting. Okay, sweetie. Tell the dearest that it's Princess Dillo's as Prince so you see him. I, I will, Mama. Bye. She ran. She couldn't bear to have her mother see or hear her crying. Scene. Well, darlings, I hope you enjoy Asian Fluffy's fan read of my adventures. So, if you like her videos, please click the like button down below and hit the fabulous subscribe button for more content and more fan read of my friends. So, oh, and one more thing before we end this video. My friend Applejack is next. So stay tuned. This has been Verity and Agent Fluffy. And we'll be seeing you guys next time. Bye. I will run with sunrise and sunset and slept until halfway through the following day. I also swallowed my pride and asked for 